黄金蝶のブローチ I can't look at Mac to some more! Umineko! When they cry now, we have finally gotten it confirmed. At least I have. It, her name is Featherine! Not Featherin! Featherine, that's right, those parts are finally out. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm up to speed now. I've uh, been pronouncing her name wrong for the last couple of parts. Uh, got led astray. But! But it's fine! Because. Now I finally have to go go lose. You know, every time I said feathering, it felt wrong in my heart. There's, there's something that felt wrong. I've always wanted to call her feathering, and now, now that I know it's that's the correct way to say it. Ah, feathering, 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 or Ewa. I'm I'm used to saying Ewa to be fair, until recently. Now that I know her name is actually feathering, Augustus Aurora. Yeah, 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 that's her full name. See, see, look at me go, look at me go. See, I remember her full name. Featherine. All right. Um. Uh. Welcome back to some more when they cry. Just gonna talk about Golden Butterfly Bridge because of you know what happened last part. We can do a little recap, then we'll get right on to it. So, <clears throat> last part we had the two Beatos. You know, um, they were they were talking about uh, ma you know, magic and how magic is affecting the older Beato, not the younger Beato. Then uh. I believe there was a big sequence of the person stuck in uh, the room trying to get out. He, they, they couldn't get out. And then they we went off to Jessica and Cannon after they're done playing cards for a little while, while at least. Um, they're out here in the in the corridor outside of the uh, <clears throat> outside of the playing cards room. Um, and they're talking to each other about love and Cannon confesses and the, the, the love is going on and they're talking and they're they're bonding a little bit. And then we start learning about, you know, well, we start talking about the interpretation of magic. Um, and just trying to understand why furniture can't love and uh, why um, <clears throat> why they need this, you know, current shall need this magical brooch to love, uh, you know, to love others. But, you know, since they already have the love set up, love going on, why do they need some extra miracle? Hasn't the miracle already happened? So... Yeah, so now Colonel's gonna delve more deep into it, I'm sure. He's gonna talk about it here, because uh, he's mentioned it to Jessica clearly. So let's keep it going. Alright. A golden butterfly brooch. <coughs><笑><笑> Okay, so we're nodding back to episode 2 when we saw Shannon break in the mirror and you know she agreed with Beato that alright you'll give me this love making mirror no love making charm for me especially in the mirror and that's what happened clearly because clearly nothing else happened there from his pocket Kanon pulled a wing of gold of a gold butterfly a wing of a gold butterfly that's what the magic brooch is that's what the golden brooch is it's a wing of a gold butterfly okay and it did a wing sound, so I wonder if you can see the tips file later. I bet we can. Alright. No, it's just though it was just a single wing, it was easy to tell from its distinctive shape that it had originally been part of something with a butterfly motif motif. <clears throat> one winged butterfly. <laughs> yeah, one winged eagle versus the one winged butterfly, or maybe I should say a marriage between a one winged eagle, Jessica, and the one winged butterfly canon. Mm-hmm. この<笑> わたしがカノン君を好きになったのは自分の素直な気持ちだぜ。ありがとうございます。お嬢様は人間だから魔女も魔法も信じない。無理もないことです。しかし、魔法で生み出された家具の僕がここに存在することHowever, as furniture created by magic, my very existence here is proof that the miracle of magic exists. 
What are you talking about? Shut up, idiot! Just love me! What's up with all this magic stuff? Jessica tried her hardest to grasp what Kanon was trying to say. However, she couldn't understand it, and I had to ask him to repeat it with a bitter smile. The bridge had lost its power when it was split in half. However, if it was ever joined together again, its magic would be revived. It would revive the miraculous power that could join furniture and a human together. Just get a second one, idiots. Why? Why? Do you only have, can't you ask Beata for another one and then do another gift to her, favor to her? You know what I mean? Why? Why? Why only one? One and only one. It was a single spark of love that the old Beato, with her shrill laugh, had sown on a day long ago. Right, I remember. That was also in episode 2. I remember. She gave that to... Uh, to, 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 to yeah. I, I remember her laughing as Karun and Jessica's relationship was falling apart. But I mean, she did give the brooch to Shannon first, before then, so... That bad teacher had likened uh, humans who were tormented by the spark to ripe, to ripe fruit and taking evil pleasure in their suffering. Yeah, okay, that was in the canon scene when canon, uh, you know, when canon with Jessica didn't work out because canon was like, "I'm furniture, I can't love you, goodbye." And then she just, uh, Beato started laughing and was like, "Ha ha ha! It's so fun to, to, to the spark of and compared to f ripe fruit, right?" <clears throat> However, the magic infused with the spark was real. It was the only crystallization of magic that the Golden Witch Beatrice ever left in this world. Its shine grew brighter. F style, can you see it, Jessica? <laughs> Jessica seen, seen the shine. F style explained this this OST is banger is a banger. I really like this OST. It will blind you. <laughs> it's a knife, Kanon is stabbing you! It grew more brilliant, brilliant still, it's shining like the sun. Praise the sun! Jessica didn't need Kanon to tell her to put her hands over her eyes. Okay. The magic might be working. As the light grew stronger, a sound like the roaring of the wind or the tide also grew. What is this? Uh, Nazi all over again? Is it, is it about Nazi throwing the baby? It's the same sound every time! The sound of the wind? The, or the tide? It's Nazi throwing the baby! It already drowned out the sound of the wind and rain outside. Jessica could no longer even stand and she crouched on the floor. It was a flood of sound and light. And until it withdrew, Jessica could, could do nothing but more. Glass break. Wait, what? That's the end of the chapter? <laughs> that happens to me way too often, man. <laughs> happens to me way too often. What's the next chapter Chapter called? Zephyr and Furfur? What? Zephyr? Oh, wait! Wait a second. Is that... Are those... Zephyr and Furfur? Let me guess. <laughs> Let me guess, Zephyr and Furfur are the names of Jessica and James. I've been calling them Jessica and James so far, but it could make sense that Zephyr and Furfur are them. 
Zephyr and Furfur are, are the names for Jessica and James. You know, the red hair person and the blue hair person. I'm calling them people persons for now because I don't know their gender. It's been very vague. I mean, I'm assuming the red haired one, Jesse, uh, Je you know, Jesse is a girl, but James is very ambiguous to say the least. Uh, I can't, can't pinpoint their gender, but Jesse seems more like a girl. So, okay. Uh, Ch chapter ending at the very, very start of the video happens to be way too often, man. I wish I knew when these chapters ended so that I could start a video and end the video when a chapter starts and ends. But I don't know. This chapter could have been twice as long. The thing is, with the American chapters that they're inconsistent in length. Some chapters are much longer than others. Some chapters only take 40 minutes to finish. Other chapters can take 2 hours to finish. You never know. So, I, I just stop when it feels natural, but sometimes it... it I don't know. So we'll just keep reading like this. That's fine. Well, I know I'm not better, but I kind of am better because I personalize with myself with him, you know, through the visual novel. I didn't. I I like to be the main character when reading a story like this. And I, I'll tell you right now, Beato, I hate sweet foods. Now, unironically, y'all, I I don't hate them. Okay, fine, but I don't. I dislike sweet foods. I don't like sweet stuff. So, I'm actually, I'm actually not a big fan of candy or cake or sweet stuff. I'm not a big fan of sugary stuff, actually. Um, which I guess helps when it comes to being healthy, in a way, right? It's a positive thing, because then, you know, I'm actually healthy, right? I don't find sweet stuff thing. But I do find other unhealthy stuff uh, tasty. So it's not like, uh, it's not like every unhealthy thing I... Uh, yeah. I dislike and I only like healthy things. Of course not, right? I'm still a, a devout lover of, you know, hamburgers and cheese and, you know, you know what I mean, pizza or whatever. You know, I'm, I'm still a lover of unhealthy foods. Of, I'm just, I'm not a, I'm not a complete weirdo. I'm, I'm still a normal human being after all, but I, I just don't like cake, sweet stuff, you know. Uh, I can eat donuts, I guess. I like donuts, I can eat those, but, you know, overly sweet stuff. Muffins. I don't. I'm not the biggest fan of muffins. You know what I mean? Eh. I can eat them if you give them to me, but I'm not. I, I don't crave them as much as everyone else. I see kids and even people my age going, "Oh, muffins!" And they're like, "Okay, okay if you want, I, I'm good without. I'm good without it. I'm good without it." Or cake. Cake is the most overhyped. Oh, in my mind, of course, cake is the most overhyped thing ever. Everyone wants cake. Birthday cake. Woo, so fun. And I'm there like. I don't really want the cake for my birthday, you know what I mean? I don't want cake for my birthday, so... Uh, funny enough, the way my family would do that really often, uh, if they did decide to do, do a birthday cake, uh, they they make cake, they'd mostly eat it themselves, but then they'd just make something else that they know I'd like, and then we're good anyway, so it's fine. But uh, yeah, obviously birthday cake is a tradition thing, uh, but uh, you know, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of cake, so <laughs> it's kind of those people... people the worst part is, right, about not liking sweet foods, isn't... It, it, obviously, it's good when it comes to being healthy, right? But it's bad in social situ situations because no one believes you, bro. Guys, it hurts, bro. Every time, I'm like, I don't like sweet stuff. People don't believe me. They, they think I'm trying to be humble. They think I'm, I'm trying not to eat what they're offering or whatever. No, I genuinely just don't like sweet stuff. And they don't believe you. They don't believe you is the worst part. So social, social situations, I don't know how to get out of those. Especially when I really don't want to eat the sweet things they're giving me, right? They could be giving me, I don't know, whatever sweet food, you know, as a little treat, right? A little biscuit, sweet biscuit thing tree right and I, and I'd look at it and I'd go man I really don't want to eat this but sometimes you get pressure to it dude. They, they give it to you as if they they really really believe that you like it and you want to eat it but I just there I then go ah, it's such a small piece fine I'll eat it you know I, I'll kind of I, I, I'll but I'll forcibly eat it I'll be eating it and then I'll, and then I'll go I make this sour face like oh, I don't want to eat I don't want to eat this but it's a social situation right it's not gonna ruin my diet or anything so okay I'll eat it because it's, it's, I have to, you know what I mean? I have, kind of like when sometimes I'm giving, I don't like coffee, so sometimes I'm giving coffee, very rarely, it's a lot more rare with coffee because coffee, at least people have the decency to ask, hey yo, do you drink coffee? Because, you know, coffee is, I feel like, is a lot more of a thing that many people don't like to drink. So people don't think that, oh yeah, this person obviously loves coffee, I'll make coffee for them, you know what I mean? 
but sweet things, people just always assume you like it. So they, that's the thing with that. And so, but with coffee, people will ask. But sometimes there have been very, very rare times that someone makes me coffee, and I don't like coffee. Yes, no, I'm a tea person. I'm a witch. Let's go, Beato. I'm with you there. <laughs> so that's the only thing I've been able to compromise with Beato is that is the the, the the love ring of tea. I love tea. She likes tea. I love tea as well. Tea party. I'm making tea all the way, but coffee sometimes people make a coffee and I didn't really ask them to do it or want them to do it either but they kind of just give it in front of me and they, and they go I right, drink and and I don't want to waste what they've done for me right because I, I you know if the uh, if the alternative is them just pouring out the coffee throwing it on I don't want I don't want that to happen so I forcibly drink the coffee and it's so bitter I don't understand why people like coffee it's bitter as hell I, it's, I know it's made to be bitter but bro it's so I, I don't I, I don't get it bro but uh, I guess it's a caffeine, right? You know, gets you to wake up. But I, I don't know, man. I, I, I drink. I, I drink it forcibly, and then I go, okay, all right, cool. You know, that was not not great. Not a great experience. But I, uh, I drank the coffee. All right, don't make me another cup, please. I don't. I don't want to drink any any more. Um, I don't want to drink any more uh, hot liquids. Okay, I should I should not have said that like that. That, oh, phrasing, phrasing was weird. I'm not gonna lie, but you get what I mean. I don't want to drink anymore until uh, for another week or something. That, that's how drink. That's how drinking coffee makes you feel like. So, uh, yeah. Um, so people like VR out there, they do exist. Uh, so before, I mean, I guess this is a rule for everything, not just sweet stuff. Before serving sweet stuff, I was gonna say, but before serving anything, I guess it's. Uh, I guess it's always a good idea to ask if they actually want the thing, because you know. You know, worse, worse than actually giving them something they like, it's a good chance you might just give them something that they really don't want to eat or drink and they kind of force you to eat or drink it because otherwise it's socially bad for them and if they don't then it, it, bad situation all around so yeah. So check Beata here, it's made a sweet food for Batra. I think Batra will like it though, I think Batra is a sucker for sweet stuff I'm sure but uh, as for me, no. And because I am backer, of course, no, don't give that to me. Kimosawa <laughs> uh, can confirm that backer does like them. Fair. You know, fair. All right, but, but uh, you know, I'll give better that. He's not a picky eater. I'm, I'm much more of a picky eater. I can, at least I can admit that, though. You know what I mean? I can admit that I can be picky at times. To be fair, I can admit. That. I can admit that. All right, that's fine. That's fine. You can call me a picky eater. That's fine. I know people will say uh, you'll outgrow it. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, nah, I'm okay with that. You know, I'm okay with that. Uh, people can see that as a negative thing, but. Uh, Ultimately, as long as I play to my advantage, you know what I'm saying, right? And try to be as healthy as possible. And most importantly, you can be picky, but at the end of the day, as long as you eat uh, in a variety, right? You don't eat the same thing every day. You don't eat the same sort of things every week. Uh, that's what matters. And I try to aim for that too, no matter how picky I can be. So I think you can still live despite it anyway. But yes, I can respect Battler for being capable of eating, eating pretty much everything. So I can't do that. There, there are things that I certainly will have to force myself to eat. Even though other people will say they love it, I, I would have to force myself to eat it. Because uh, that's how much I really don't want to eat, eat, eat the thing. <laughs> I like seafood though. I know there's a lot of people... I know seafood is, is, can be very hated by many. I know many hate it, and I know many love it too. It, a lot of people really, really love it, a lot of people really, really hate it. There's of course people that find it mediocre, just they need it if it's there, but they don't love it, love it, right? I know that those people exist too, but I love seafood, right? I'm not, I'm not uh, picky when it comes to seafood at all. Give me any sort of sea, sea, uh, seafood and I'll, I'm chomping down, right? Fish? Ah, hell yeah, I'm down for fish. Octopus? Yeah, baby. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh... Of course, big fan of stuff like sushi as well. Yeah, all that, all that. That's great. Good stuff. All right. Anyway, I've been I've been really waffling here. Let's let's try to make some progress in this story. After waiting for the master of the study to be out, Beato and Kumasawa entered the study. Then they quickly tidied away the books on the desk, set down the basket they had brought there, and began spreading out the content contents. 
inside were several cute cookies cut out in a butterfly shape. You know what? Cookies I can eat to be fair. You know what I mean? Ronovay's cookies, I'm sure they're great. Good, great. Um, I can eat those. I don't hate cookies. In a butterfly shape though. Wait a minute. Is that an to what just happened? Butterfly wing? The, the golden brooch? Heyo, Beato? Canon? Shannon? Connected? Connection? Set out a cute plate and neatly decorated it with the cookies. It was the kind of side adornment. It was the kind of side ador slight hold crap I can't read. I, I, I was wondering what was going on there. Okay. It was the kind of slight adornment that the person eating wasn't likely to even notice. The whole setup was filled with that sort of feeling. <laughs> Then the study door swung violently open. It was Battler with Kenji by his side. Battler's eyes went white for a second when he saw Beato there. But his expression quickly went blank again. ここで何をしている。お父様、失礼しました。決して大切なゲームの邪魔に来たわけでは。どうしてここに入ると。ここには鍵がかかっていたはず。Locked room, Ayo. Who died? 申し訳ございません。親方様に。内密で差し入れをお届けしたいとのことで私が鍵をお貸ししましたほら見てあげてくださいませ親方様に喜んでもらおうとベアトリーチェ様が一生懸命クッキーを焼いたんですよ熊沢さんと源氏さんに習いました
Batman is my ideal main character, bro. He's my favorite MC, bro. What is this about, bro? He's like me for real. We're the same person, basically, at this point. <laughs> Shut up about my lord. Don't just call me Batman. I'm not no lord. And whose daughter is that? That ain't my daughter. I'm no father. What are you on about? お同じことをもう一度言わせるな。片付けて下がって。お、親方様、せめて一口お口に運ばれるわけにはまいりませんか。ベアトリーにとっても大切な最後のゲームなんだ。だから頼む。俺の心をかき乱すような真似は慎んでくれ。それはあまりにもひどうございます。気持ちは感謝する。大いに結構でございます。しかし、それをせめて一口お召しになる
Here, here's how the ingredient for the special small bombs. There you go. Battery, eat it, and boom. <laughs> oh man, that was so good. Small bombs. Yeah, Battery ever came to give me cookies. Of course, I think that she put some kind of crazy poison in them. She asked me if I thought there'd be poison in these. How could anyone ever think that cookies like these, piled up in such a neat and cute way, could possibly have something bizarre hidden inside? And who could possibly believe that Beato would make something like this? Because of that, Beato couldn't bear to look at Beato's innocent reaction which was completely free from any malicious malicious thoughts of slip, slipping poison into the cookies. Beata quietly started to clean up. Every now and then, she sniffled. Kumasawa had been glaring at Battler continuously, but she now gave a small sign and helped Beato clean up. However, the hardness didn't disappear from her expression. <laughs> Now get out of here and stop calling me father. I ain't your dad. You have no mother. Or you might have a mother, but she ain't no mother that I know of. Facts. Let's go, Battler. Tell her. And I, and I, listen. And I didn't even go to get some milk either. I legit don't have no, don't have no daughter. Get out of here. Nah, mate. You know what would be really messed up? <laughs> if... <laughs> if in, let's say, 30 years time. 30 years, right? The year is... The year right now is 2023. Let's say in 2053, right? I'm in Luffy, you know, me, right? Actually, let's say I do actually have a daughter at that point. Like, legitimately. Let's say you are watching this 30 years in the future, right? Yeah, I do have a daughter at that point. What I'm saying right now... Wild, right? You know what I mean? So wild. Out of context. So wild, bro. And you gotta remember, <laughs> this is 30 years in the past, okay? Chill. Alright? Come on, man. I I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You know, you know, I chill out. Let let's chillax, okay? I mean, uh, uh, but it would be wild. It would be even wilder if it wasn't me that watched this back. If for some reason, my own daughter is actually would actually be watching this. Now that would be a twist. Let's say I have a daughter then, and let's say she's I don't know, 17 years old, right? Or the Beato's age, whatever. And she's watching this. <laughs> that would be crazy. That no, that that would be a twist. That would be a twist. <laughs> hey yo, I'm, I'm talking about the visual novel, all right? All right. And besides, come on. Come on, like, <laughs> come on, all right? Come on, don't, don't, you know, don't, don't uh, judge whatever is going on with me in the future to the me in the past, okay? All right, all right. Le le let's leave it there, okay? All right, right? You know, I ain't got no wife, I ain't got no daughter for now. Let's leave it at that, okay? So I can see whatever I want. And what I'm saying right now is that Beato is my daughter. Stop calling me father, okay? If in 30 years' time I do have a daughter, then the, I mean I'm sure I'm okay, I'll be okay with call her calling me father. I don't know why she'd call me father in English, though. I'm sure she'd call me father in Norwegian. I feel like that would make a lot more sense unless I, for some reason, decide to settle. On an, in an English speaking country, and then my daughter learns English instead of Nor ever learning the region, then yeah, of course, then she would, might be calling me father. But, but that ain't the point here. Um, either way, that is way too far ahead in the future, okay? I'm talking, I'm thinking this is at least 15, 10, 10 okay, 10, 15 years time from now before even to think about worrying about any of this. Right? I'm talking about you, Beato! Alright? And I would laugh in your face if you think she'd be, she'd be called Beato. Wild. 
whoever no I'm, okay you know i'll stop there i'll stop right there i'll stop there i can't i can't keep going with that let's just read let's just keep reading uh if any of you watching uh, does have a daughter uh you know we're reading you an echo okay we're it's a fictional story it, it, it says it at the start of every episode right every, every happenings events everything is fiction Purely fiction for entertainment, okay? So everything that I'm saying right now regarding this vision obviously is for pure entertainment. And so if you do have a daughter, please disconnect any of that to what I'm saying, okay? Uh, besides, it shouldn't affect you in any way because I'm saying it, so whatever, okay? Okay, good. Fictional story. <laughs> you know, I wonder if Battle's voice oh no Daisuke, Battle's voice actor, does he have uh, children? <laughs> Imagine, imagine his children reading Mineko, or at least just listening to voice clip of, of their dad just, just going uh, Don't call me father. I, I don't know how you say it in Japanese. I don't know how to say don't call me father in Japanese, but imagine that. Don't call me father. They, they have that on repeat as they go to sleep every night. <laughs> He's telling me not to call me father. How does my imagination go there? I don't know, but uh, imagine they just have voice clips, <laughs> or maybe, maybe whenever they get a notification on their phone, <laughs> they just hear Battler, their their father, their you know their father is the voice actor, they just hear Battler going, "Don't call me father." They get a freaking YouTube notification. Emily has uploaded the video. Don't call me father. Ah <laughs> uh, man, all right. Better than once call me that. Right. I'm having too much fun with what's going on right now and comparing it to real life too much. And actually, yeah, alright, so alright, let's keep reading. <laughs> so you said this before, Beto, but you, yeah, you still insisted on calling me father after, after that, so. Hanging her head so low that her chin touched her chest, Beato hurried out of the study. Uh, that's not good for your neck. Don't do that. Uh, that would hurt my neck. Touching your, touching your, your chest with your chin. Oh man, that, that. At least doing it for too long. Yeah, your neck is gonna have some real problems. After giving Butler a look, Kamasawa chased after her. She shut the door a bit violently, and the footsteps of the pair rapidly disappeared off into the distance. Into the distance. What's up, Genji? What do you have to say to me? Okay. That's right, you don't. That's right, Genji. You stay silent. I do what I want. Hey, what do you have to say about this, Genji, huh? No, 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 no. My fatherly uh, attitude there was perfect, Genji. That's what's up. Now, you call me Onichan all you. Enji! Na 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 na! You, you, my sweet, 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 sweet little sister. Alright? You keep calling me Onichan all you want, of course. This, there, yeah, 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 yeah. What are you? Uh, in fact, I implore you to do this. You don't you dare stop. What? You think I hold you to the same standards of <laughs> Beatrice? Not even the real one, chick, Beatrice. <laughs> Keep calling me Onichan. At all times. Don't you dare stop. <laughs> Even if I may not I may not have a if I may not have a little sister in life, which is good actually. That would be you know, that would make all, all this extra weird if I did. Good thing I don't. I don't have any sisters in general, so so this is great to begin with, you know what I mean? Uh if Angie was I mean, okay, moving on. <laughs> Genuine woman, you know what? Alright. I'll, I'll take that title over eating sweets. I don't know why my father and Beato are together. I don't know why my father and Beato are together. I think Beato is the best of us. 
Okay, but let's, let's keep calling you Anisha. She said it again! Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, never stop. Never stop! That's right! You share hair color and everything. But, that's why I'm not going to be a girl. I'm not going to Shut up. But still keep calling me Onichan. But I don't I don't like your last sentence, but keep calling me Onichan. Batura no kimochimo, skoshi wa wakaru mana. Kanashi kotoda. Yeah, of course you understand it because you're also a forger. But you're also you're also a writer, right? You also had to create a game not a game board, but you know what I mean? You had to forge a game board or whatever. So you know what it's like to focus on that and not want to be interrupted. I still don't understand what kind of bad blood or connection there was between them. However, Onichan. <laughs> Onichan. Oh man, that's. Oh, Onichan! Probably views Beato <laughs> as a friendly adversary, if not, if not something more. Onichan. <laughs> hey, Beato, I don't care, you'll never get this treatment from me. Nah! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Onichan's reaction for defeating Beato isn't to destroy an enemy out of hatred. Reason, not reaction. Reason for, for defeating Beato. It feels like he wants to give a sincere answer to her questions. Yes. I can't deny the fact that their fight isn't based on hatred, but on a stronger emotion. Love, wow! That's what you're getting at. Sarani Yeba, Asokoma de Tsmetak Sarete. それでもなお、お兄ちゃんにつくそうとするベアとも大したもんだわ。Yeah, so maybe it is to mirror what's going on in real life between Sean and Battler. But I don't think Battler in real life is acting coldly to Sean on purpose. But that's not what matters, right? What matters is how Sean feels about it. And so, even if Battler doesn't think he's being that bad or he's being bad at all, and if we don't think that, if Sean thinks that, then that's. What we saw earlier a second ago with the sweet stuff between, you know, Game Master Battler and Beato, that might be how it actually feels for Shannon the way Battler's treating him. もう一人の姉のベアトと私もどう意見よ。どうしてお兄ちゃんにあそこまで尽くすのか理解できないわ。そしてその理解できる要素は千年を経て変化を遂げるとはいえ、紛れもなく。我々の知る黄金の魔女ベアトリーチェに受け継がれるものであるええ理解しているわそう so six years このベアトを知ることもまたやがてのベアトを知ることにつながるそしてそれはこのおかしなゲームで最大の黄金とあるいはこのゲーム版そのものを説明するかもしれないあつ big claim for Angie right there but it, she's probably right actually. She's probably right actually because figuring out the relationship between Beato and Battler, this peace and Battler, right? Because she's the embodiment of that relationship. Uh, or Shannon and Battler will, will understand why the game board's been going on like this. But then there's also the question of what the older sister Beato is supposed to represent. Though she said those words, Featherine, oh, I can't. I'm so glad I'm able to call her by what I feel like was a natural way of calling her all along. Featherine, nice. When she said those words, Featherine wore a confident smile on her face. Her sar sarcastic confidence, as though she already knew the answer, was unchanged. Beatrice, the chick or the old elder? The chick, I'm guessing. Yeah. Hi. <gasps> Beato had been reading a fragment book in the shadows of the study, jumped when Angie called out to her. Probably because uh, I'm the reason she was reborn, right? I kind of tried making her again, right? That's probably it. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. では、どうしてウシロミアバトラにそこまで尽くすのフレグザクシェイムリーズンノコマはウミダシタゾウブツシュニゼッタイフクジュシナクテワナラナイルルデモルノウミノウリーバーアミンイスンイスカナンデシェ
your actual parents, you know what I mean? Created you. <laughs> kind, of, kind of the same vibe. But I guess, not in, in a different way than how Chick Beato's doing things, though. ゲームマスターが上手に扱えば便利な道具になる。しかし扱いを間違えれば自らを傷つけもする。ええ、待って、you まるでそれはあなたという駒の目的かのようだわ。はい。それが私が生み出された目的だからです。あんたを生み出したお兄ちゃん自身がその目的を与えたの？それは違う。バトラーはゲームマスターとしてそういう役目を持った駒を盤上
一番の幸せなのです<笑>何をそれ尽くしたいってだけならまさに魔女のカグネと言いたいところだけどそれを認めてもらいたいそれじゃカグってよりもらけヒューマンエンディストップミッツェンツエンツレスレクフェンチュー I'm more like you're just a girl who loves Onichan! Keep, keep calling me that. Onichan! I don't get it. The guy in the force behind this Beato's actions is that of a girl who adores Onichan. <clears throat> it makes a lot more sense if you connect this girl to being Shannon. I think that's, that makes things a lot clearer. A lot more. A lot more. Um, uh, ex ex things make more sense. Things make more sense if you connect this, this chick Beato to, to Shannon and this chick Beato to Shannon's feelings, right? Battler ignoring chick Beato, like how Battler's ignoring Shannon, at least for, for, from Shannon's POV, right? That, 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 that helps, but then. What would, they, what would that make her? If she liked Onichan, then she would have adored him and done things for him herself. Why would she create a piece of herself, a separate entity, to do it? That's a good question, actually. I don't know. Why, why would Shannon create a piece? I don't get that. Yeah, I don't get that. I only get it from the sense that Shannon is this chick Beato, but I don't get... Yeah, I don't get... Why there's another Beato? There's a culmination of all these different Beatos that split herself into two. I don't get that. This way, even if she does attract Onichan's attention, it will be towards the peace version of herself, not the creator who made the peace. Does. Does Shannon have a creator? Right? Because if Shannon's trying to get Battle's affection, but then it's not really Shannon getting that affection, it's someone else that controls Shannon? Right? Shannon's someone getting affection. That version of whoever Shannon is is getting the affection, not Shannon herself or Sayo. Or whatever, you know what I mean? A am I making sense? If I try to compare it to the real world, this just sounds like a freaking bizarre case of multiple personality disorder. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? This just sounds like Shannon freaking has multiple personalities, and the one personality is like, hey yo, listen, your personality is a lot. Your personality, you, you, you're the one in charge of having Batman fall in love with you. How about that? And I'll, uh, even though I'm the one in love with him. And then the, the Shadow Batman, Shadow Shana person is like, bro, but I, I'm not the one that loves him, you do. Okay, okay, fine, I'll do it for you because you're me, but we're the shared bodies. All right, okay, cool. Th that's what it sounds like. <clears throat> Which, to be fair, is kind of weird considering my theory at the end of episode 4 that Kanon and Shannon were the same person. But then I dropped that theory because it doesn't make sense considering they were in the same room and Erika was there. And Erika noticed both of them. So we know that can't be right. Although there is still the mystery of Kanon's disappearing body. But but we know Shannon and Kanon can't be the same person. Or at least I need to get the scene in episode 5 explained for, for that theory to work again. Because I've been pretty convinced that they're not the same person. It sounds like a, such a great theory to start. Um, but yeah, I mean, bringing this back here. Another piece of herself. Maybe Shannon does have multiple personality dis disorder. And it's not connected to Kanon. And Kanon's disappearance is, has some, has, has some other issue to it. That's a possibility. Right? It's a possibility I'm trying to connect things. You know how humans have... Uh, we try to connect coincidences a lot, that's how us humans work, we try to make connections to everything we see, even even though two things are can be just a coincidence and you don't have to connect them, 
uh, humans, we, we're, good at, we're good at finding patterns. And so that could just be the human in me trying to find a pattern of things that don't actually exist. So, maybe, maybe. Um, but then, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of questions going on. But I think we'll keep reading for now. Because I'm not, I need more clues, I think. Or I might have enough clues right already, but... I, I, yeah, I don't, I can't, I can't, I just, I feel like I need more clues still. I've been saying you need more clues since episode 2, but I, I still don't feel like I have enough right now to solve, uh, to solve stuff, so. Alright. If I ever fall in love with someone, I probably want to do things for them. But of course, I would want to do those, thi those things myself. After all, I would want him to notice me! That, that does make sense. That does add, add up, Angie. This love is destined to go virtually unrewarded. No matter how devoted she is, she will never get anything out of it. And she's done this out of her own free will. Beato's behavior looks no different from that of an average girl in love. She's devotedly be doing all she can for him, dreaming that her kindness will eventually be acknowledged. Why would Beato create a piece like this? Is putting it in terms of romance a bit too confusing? Now let's try using food as an example. It's as pointless as creating a piece to eat food for you. Uh, ask Vegapunk. <laughs> let's go, man. to drag a One Piece reference in there. Let's go. Bro, Vegapunk, so good it. Man made. I mean, actually, this is One Piece spoilers, so I shouldn't get delve into that. It's actually relatively recent One Piece spoilers, too, so I don't wanna, I don't wanna say that. But okay. I mean, I already said the, the, the Vegapunk made that, made that, but yeah, you know, imagine making a clone of yourself that will eat, drink, sleep, and poo for you, so you don't have to do it. So you can spend all your time researching and <laughs> and being a scientist. That's all I'll say. I won't go any deeper because uh, I've already said enough about. We said One Piece stuff that's going on, but okay, I'm glad I managed to drag One Piece in there. Let's go. All right. No matter how much food your piece eats on your behalf, you won't get any less hungry, right? Oh, uh, okay. Well, I mean, okay. If that's if that's what you're saying, then yeah, sure. Uh, I was thinking more like, you know, that piece shares your your hunger and your um and your energy, how much energy your body has. So if they don't, then yeah, of course, sure. You're the one who wants to eat. There's no reason for having a piece to do that in your place. For most jobs in the world, you can get someone to else to do it for you. However, with love and food alone, there can never be any meaning in letting another person do it in your place. That's right. This Beato's great as a piece for an impossible reason. So at a glance, she looks like just a she looks like just a normal girl. The more I learn about her, the less I understand. Like an imaginary number. Who? Who? Energy number, let's go math! Let's go Angie! Alright? Number I? What's the square root of I, baby? Square root of minus one, I should have said. What's the square root of minus one, baby? What's I what's I squared? <coughs> yeah. Shion. The anagram of Shion? Number I, the imaginary number. That's why Shion is called Shion. That's such, that's such a, that's, such, that's so clever. That is so clever. All right, okay, anyway. <clears throat> what, what, what I said probably doesn't make sense to you if you're not a 358 over two days fan, so that's fine. <clears throat> father hates it when I call him father. Yes, I do. Stop calling me father. I ain't your dad. <clears throat> so stop calling me father then. Easy solution. かつてのあんたは誰が相手でも呼び捨てにしてたわ。だからといって、お父様を呼び捨てにはできません。But you should。せめてバトラさんと呼ぶように努力はしたいと思います。I can accept that. I can accept that. I can accept son. I cannot accept father, but I accept better son. Fine.あんなに冷たくされてよくめげないものね。
That's right. I'm not a tall son. I'm backer son. That's right. keep 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 that up. <笑>フォーメディブル。いや、いや、ライト。いよいよゲームが佳境に差し掛かろうというデリケートなところに私が写真で出て。バトラさんが望まないお父様という言葉をかけてしまったのですから。機嫌を崩されても無理ないことです。Beto still wants to devote herself to Batler, even after being treated in such a cold manner. Though to an outsider, it just looks as though she's being snubbed. It doesn't face her at all. It truly is the blindness of a girl in love. Oh! Is she gonna say the thing? The, the, the freaking quote the, the, that's been said a million times? By every character in the story? <laughs> well, not really, but a lot of characters. Hell yeah. Beata once again immersed herself in the fragment book that told of her former self. She tried to find something about the Beto that Battle desired. Angie shrugged as though saying, well, I don't get it. Featherine laughed when she saw this and quipped that an innocent young woman could never understand. Angie grumbled something back unhappily. Their interactions seemed to have no effect whatsoever on Beto as she sat in the shadows of the library. It's raining. After chasing all the others out, only Battle remained in the study. Do I want to keep reading or do I stop it there? I reckon I stop it there. What do you all think? Yeah, I think it's a good time to stop it. We've been reading for about an hour, right? So, um, okay. We didn't make the most progress this part, but that's okay for now. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this part of Imineko when they cry. Um, <coughs> maybe we'll slowly but surely start to understand more about Chick Beato as she goes along with her fragment reading book. Um, but yeah, definitely story was we didn't make the most progress. Uh, Rattler, you know, <coughs> uh, going after Virgil, yeah, I say. Kumasawa and Chick Beato very hard. and uh, but, but it seems like at the end, one progress we did seem to make is that uh, Chick Beato seems to finally, finally, uh, Learn to stop calling me Battler, or at least Battler son, which I'll take over father, which is good, that's that's great. So that's one piece of progress we've made, that's great. I hope she just continues calling me Battler forever and stop, stop calling me father eventually. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this part of Mineko at least as much as I enjoyed reading it, and I'll see you guys next time. Alright, y'all. Peace.